important for us to know today that the Federal Reserve System is nothing more or less than a banking cartel. And so when the chairman of the Federal Reserve steps before one of those congressional committees and he says, well, let me explain our monetary policy. Uh, we decided to raise interest rates uh, or we decided to lower interest rates or we decide whatever we decided to do. He always says it's because it's in the best interest of America. It's for you folks. We raised interest rates to cool down rampant inflation for you folks. Or we lowered interest rates to stimulate investment and production to uh, get the economy moving again for you folks. When in truth, a cartel has only one purpose for existence, and you folks have nothing to do with it. <laughs> a cartel is only there to enhance and promote the interests of the members of the cartel. So if... Um, and Mr. Bernanke, or formerly Greenspan, had said, well, we raised interest rates this week because we thought we could get away with it, nobody would mind. Uh, that wouldn't go over too well because that's not in the interest of you folks. But once you understand that basic nature of the Fed, that it is a banking cartel, then so much, if not everything that's happening in recent times and in the immediate future suddenly makes sense. And you are not the beneficiary of any of it. You may wonder in recent times when we see the Federal Reserve creating these used to be billions which scare us. Now it's trillions. And one, one week alone, I think they created $17 trillion out of nothing. That's what they do, you know. Out of nothing. Where did that money come from? Nothing. It didn't come from anywhere. And where did it go? That's the thing that shocked people. Well, it went to the banks, didn't it? What do you expect? Duh. <laughs> That's what those guys are there for. It's not to give it to you. It's not to stimulate the economy. It's not to stimulate the home market. It's not to provide jobs or employment or anything. It's to make sure that the banks do not fail. So they can make risky investments. They can, they can loan millions, billions of trillions of dollars to third world countries or corporations that don't stand a chance of ever again making a profit. But they'll lend the money anyway because they can collect interest on it. And if the loan goes bad, they can go back to Congress, their partners in this uh, cartel, and say, in the interest of America, we must provide this money to keep these banks afloat because if the banks close, America will fall and will be taken over by the Red Chinese or something like that. Children will starve. Unemployment will be worse. It's always to help you folks that all of this money is created out of nothing and you've noticed it either goes directly to the banks to make their balance sheet better, to wipe off those, those losses, or it goes to the companies and countries that owe money to the banks so that they can continue making their payments to the banks. So it's either directly or indirectly, most of that money winds up in the banks. And as you continue looking down this path where we're headed, you see where we started, where we are now, and it, I'm gonna say it again and over and over again, unless there are some major changes in the forces acting on that line of history, it's going to get worse and worse and nothing is really ever going to change. But the starting point is to understand the true nature of this creature from Jekyll Island. I should take just a moment to talk about how money is created. I, I said it's created out of nothing, and it's certainly true. But there's a very intricate and uh, compelling bit of accounting that goes with it. And once you clear your mind of all of the accounting phrases in the banker language, and you realize, oh my gosh, this is nothing but a fraud, once you get down to that level, then it gets very simple. And that's really all it is. They create money out of nothing, and then they loan it to you and to me and to corporations and other countries and so forth. And then they collect interest on it. Now just think about that. Collecting interest on nothing. Not too shabby. Why didn't I think of that, you know? 
Well, if we tried that, we'd go to prison, wouldn't we? Because we didn't write the Federal Reserve Act. We weren't there on Jekyll Island. All they did was take their cartel agreement and then got this big eraser and erased the heading which said cartel agreement and they wrote in Federal Reserve Act. And they got these dum-dums in Congress to vote for it. And so now what would normally be just a, a cartel agreement between formerly competing businesses now is enshrined in law. And you and I are bound by law to obey their cartel agreement. And if we don't, we go to prison, which is why most people think it's a government agency. Because they think, well, only government can put you in prison, right? That's true. But when the government has been suckered into the deal and becomes a partner with the cartel, which is increasingly what you see at, at all levels of the economy today, not just banking. You saw a little funny thing on the, on the uh, video here as we came in. They talked about uh, government motors and so forth. I mean, it's creeping into all aspects of the economy, insurance, health care, everything. So when it becomes cartelized like that, it gets the government behind it and the laws make it so that you have to obey the arrangement that basically was created by business cartels for their advantage and their control over the economy and to make sure that you don't get in the way and just dutifully pay up what you owe and uh, don't make waves. So that's the, the mandrake mechanism. They do create huge amounts of money at will. And as this new money floods into the economy, it creates this thing called inflation because there's more and more money growing at a rate faster than goods and services are growing. As long as they're in balance, everything, the prices remain the same. But when you give human beings the, the power, the authority to create money out of nothing, you know what they're going to do? They're going to create money out of nothing. And lots of it. Huge amounts of it. They always have. This is not new in the United States. This is a historical phenomenon. And every time, every time a nation has tried this, it has destroyed itself because of this power to create money out of nothing. It has debauched its currency. All the great empires have been destroyed because of that. And we are on the same path. I'm going to say it again. If there's not something to change the forces acting on this line of history, this is where we're headed. Total destruction of the economy. There's no other place. That's where we're going. That's where we're headed. And that's where we're going to end up if we don't make some serious changes. Inflation, of course, is nothing but a hidden tax. Where, where does this money come from? You say, well, it didn't come from the taxpayer. They didn't charge us taxes, did they? But they flooded the money into the economy. And now the price of bread goes up. The price of college education goes up. The price of everything we need goes up, 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 up. It's not that the prices are going up, it's that the value of the dollar is going down, down, down. That's what's really happening. And so they're getting it from us anyway, but not through this tax formula. They get it through this inflation formula. So inflation is a hidden tax, and that's the name of the game. It's a tax that most people don't recognize as a tax, and therefore they sit still and tolerate it. If the American people had to pay through taxes, what they have already paid through loss of purchasing power, which since the Federal Reserve came into being in 1913, now represents about 97% of the purchasing power of the American dollar has been paid to the government and to the banks, their partners, in this hidden tax called inflation. If the American people were required to do that as a direct tax, there would have been a revolution long ago. But people don't realize that they're paying it as a tax. And it's a slow process. Okay, I've got to keep moving. So what did we get? Let's wrap up this thing about the Fed. As I say, it's a lot of interesting history, but here's what we got. We got a corporation. It was chartered by Congress and was given the exclusive franchise to create the nation's money supply. What a coup that was. Private banks were given the power to create the nation's money supply. And the power of government backed it up. So we got a banking cartel that was a partner 
with the federal government to enforce the cartel agreement and create the illusion of it being a government agency. We got a mechanism whereby Congress can raise unlimited taxes through this process called inflation and without the public even being aware in most cases that they're paying this tax. We got a law that re allows the banks to collect interest on nothing. And we created through the Federal Reserve Act a golden parachute which enables the fraudulent banks to pass on their inevitable losses to the taxpayer in the name of rescuing the economy. Has the system passed on its losses to the taxpayers? Of course, started way, way, way back, Be became serious back in 1970 when they bailed out Penn Central Railroad so they could continue making payments to the banks. They bailed out Lockheed Corporation in 1970 so they could continue making interest payments to the banks. They bailed out Commonwealth Bank itself in Detroit in 1972. New York City was bailed out in 1975. First Pennsylvania Bank in 1980. Continental Illinois in 1982. And of course the banks in the third world are, uh, even including Russia and China, are beneficiaries of this bailout cash flow. And of course, by the time we hit 2008 and 2009, the locomotive was in full runaway mode, heading it down a steep grade. And since that time, they, they dropped all pretense at being conservative in this matter. And we, we saw $700 billion created in one day and 13 trillion dollars in four months. There's nothing like this that's ever happened before in history. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, ladies and gentlemen, to figure out where this is headed. Unless that line of history is altered, it's headed to the end. It cannot be sustained. And even though I see some older heads in here, maybe not quite as old as mine, but I'm here to tell you most of us in this room will live to see the end of it. Now, these are not rescue packages. These are not economic stimuluses. This is nothing less than legalized plunder of the American people. 